So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> and thank you for joining this uh, training session on uh, Creative Commons, which uh, we have thought uh, could be useful for the, for the ARO members. Uh, because uh, uh, you might need uh, to, to fetch, to find some training contents out in the web. Uh, and there are uh, plenty of valuable uh, results that you can use for training of your people, for training of, the, of your beneficiaries uh, uh, through the uh, OER uh, paradigm, Open Educational Resources. This is the reason why we invited uh, uh, Professor Fauci Baroud from uh, University of Notre Dame in Beirut. He is Vice President for Information Technology and uh, also very importantly, he has a uh, UNESCO Chair in Open Educational Resources. So uh, I will give the floor to him uh, to introduce the course. Fauci, the, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Raniero. Good, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Yeah, my name is uh, Fauzi Baroud. I'm uh, from Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, I am the Assistant Vice President for Information Technology at a private uh, university. Our university is a private uh, 5,000 uh, student adopting the American system. Uh, today, it's uh, a pleasure for me to uh, present uh, uh, about uh, Creative Commons licenses. You know, as you know, we have uh, three different workshops. The first one is today, we have one tomorrow, and hopefully next week, we're gonna have the uh, uh, last one. Uh, uh, before I, I proceed with my presentation, it would be great uh, if, uh, since we are a, a small uh, audience, uh, uh, if uh, we can, uh, uh, get to know each other, you know, like I will start with uh, Suza. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please, in less than one minute? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Uh, I'm coming from Hungary, and I represent uh, Menedic, and I'm the, the, the trainer at the organization. So um, I think it would be very valuable for me. Um, I'm, uh, we are delivering training for uh, almost every professional who works with migrants and refugees, naming uh, social workers, teachers, police officers, guards, public officers, and I'm usually the one who puts together the training material and also delivers the training and makes evaluations. So uh, this is my job and uh, I'm happy to be here. Glad to meet you, Susa. Yeah, Luisa? Good morning. Buongiorno. 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 Thanks for being with us this morning. So I'm representing uh, the NGO CESIA. Uh, our main seat is in Palermo, Sicily, Italy. And I'm particularly interested in your sessions, your series of sessions, as we are responsible for communication and dissemination of the overall RISE project. So I'm very keen to learn more so that we can ensure that we are, um, th that our research results go public in a proper way. So um, thanks for guiding us actually, uh, so that we are sure to meet the criteria. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Luisa. We have uh, 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 Marta. Marta, can you hear uh, yes. us? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I have quite weak connection today, so I cannot use my camera. But here I am. I'm uh, representing University of Helsinki, and I'm a PhD student in uh, work, working in this uh, sub-project of, of Helsinki. And this uh, content is, is uh, uh, totally new for me, so uh, I'm just ha happy to know what, what you have to, to tell for us. Thank you. Well, welcome. Uh, Kefaya? Can you hear us? Arwa? I don't know, I have to check the uh, Good morning, everybody. I am Kefaya Khader from Jordan. Welcome, uh, Kefaya. Uh, and you do what, uh, Kefaya? 
uh, sorry. Uh, you work where in Jordan? Uh, right now, I'm not working. Uh, uh -huh. I used to the Jordanian Hashemite Fund, if you hear about it, Juhud. Uh, it's uh, with the Princess Basma uh, bin Talal. But now I am not working. I'm freelancer, okay. uh, working with the societies uh, as volunteer. And uh, I used to give training for uh, some kind of uh, for the children, for the refugees. Um, uh, right now, but you know, because COVID now, it's a little bit uh, yani less than before. I'm trying to, yani, or I hope if, if we can yani, still have uh, training for other in the societies because, you know, the weather or the, the situation now, it's not yani, suitable for training in front of each other. Okay, welcome, uh, Kifaya. Ahlo, Kiki. Ahlo, Sahla. Thank you very much. Shabbatki. Uh, any, anyone else uh, would you uh, would like to tell us? Uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, thank you all, uh, and uh, thank you, Raniero, for inviting me over to give this uh, presentation. Uh, let me start with uh, uh, this uh, uh, slide to understand more what we will accomplish by the end of this workshop. We're going to talk about Creative Commons. Uh, in general, we're going to talk about the, the licensing uh, permission. We're, we're going to talk about, we're going to uh, recognize how to differentiate all those licenses and how to do the remixing, uh, how to create the appropriate license for our work. And uh, the last thing we'll talk about, you know, the attribution and how we give attribution to uh, our work. Starting with this slide, you know, I. I read a little bit about the uh, uh, race project and the important uh, work it's been doing. And uh, from my understanding uh, of my reading, that uh, it is a, a very important project because uh, 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 it's focused on a, a, a research issue. Uh, looking at this slide from uh, UNHCR, uh, and it's a, a recent one, we have around 80 million, almost 80 million forcibly displaced people worldwide at the, by the end of 2019. We have 26 million uh, refugees, uh, uh, and they have subdivided them uh, uh, according uh, to this slide. So a huge number of people who are displaced worldwide. The question is, the big question is, how can we help uh, with this problem? Uh, and of course, you know, when we talk about uh, forcibly displaced people, we talk about uh, different problems, different issues from, uh, from security, from uh, food, uh, uh, we talk from uh, different perspective, uh, their needs, uh, but also uh, one important uh, factor is uh, education. How do we educate those people? Where do, find, where do we find the resources? So the, the, the thing is we need to think about uh, uh, really uh, how can open educational resources? And today I will not talk uh, uh, too much about OER and uh, the MOOC and open access and stuff. I'll leave it till tomorrow. But I have to make this introduction. The question is how can open educational resources, open practices help those forcibly displaced people with problems of social inclusion, employability, entry into our, our uh, and the entry into our education system? This is the big <laughs> question. Uh, be, before we we uh, uh, we go further, I want to set. Let me please set the context of uh, <clears throat> of uh, the issue of uh, OER. How all it started, where did it started, and emphasize more on the UNESCO role uh, uh, with OER. If you look at this slide here, you see you know uh, starting in two thousand two. This is when uh, uh, the term OER was coined uh, by UNESCO uh, in one of the, their important you know, forums, which was called the Impact of Open Culture for Higher Education in Development Countries. And then since 2002, we have another declaration, which they called it the Cape Town Open Education Declaration. And by the way, uh, I will share my slides for uh, uh, with the participants and uh, uh, for whoever would like to see them. And all uh, the links that you see on the slide are uh, linkable. Yani it will take you to the uh, document uh, that I'm referring to. 
And in 2012, we had what we call the Paris OER declaration. In 2017, there was a very important uh, event in, uh, in Ljubljana. And uh, uh, we had the OER action plan, and they called it OER action plan from awareness to uh, action. And the last one, uh, just this year, uh, uh, they issued what they call the final OER recommendation, which was approved by 193 members. They approved those, uh, uh, this recommendation. And I will uh, uh, a little bit talk about what's in this recommendation and, uh, uh, and the reason uh, why they have this recommendation and why it was approved. First, this recommendation, which is the final one, it has five areas of action. Those five areas of action, which are included in the uh, recommendation, by the way, uh, if you click here also on the recommendation, you can go directly to the uh, detail of this recommendation. Anyway, if you look at uh, uh, what's, uh, I'm gonna summarize what's in this, uh, uh, final recommendation. Uh, we have five pillars or five areas of action. The first one, they called it the building the capacity of stakeholders to create, access, reuse, adapt, and redistribute OER. The second one, developing supportive policy for OER. We'll talk a little bit more in detail in uh, tomorrow's session. The third one, the third pillar or the third action is encouraging inclusive and equitable quality OER. And number four, creation of sustainability models for OER. And number five is the promoting and reinforcing international co uh, cooperation in OER. So those are the five areas of action. Of course, there are a lot of details under each one of those. And if we take just uh, one of the, uh, which is number four, inclusive and equitable OER, and we, we read uh, what they have, they're saying that uh, supporting the adoption, countries, government, you know, stakeholders, uh, uh, adoption of strategies and programs, including through relevant technology solutions that ensure OER in any medium are shared in open formats and standards to maximize equitable access, co-creation, curation, and searchability, including for those from vulnerable groups and persons with disabilities. So a lot of uh, of the work you're doing, a lot of work RAISE is doing, and maybe other projects, you know, they are built within those action uh, plans. And two other things they have defined in this uh, important uh, uh, document or recommendation, they have defined and they have agree agreed on two definitions. One, the first definition they have agreed on is uh, uh, the OER or the Open Educational Resources, and they have defined it because as you know, we have so many definitions, you know, in the open movement community, we have, we have so many definitions for open educational resources. But what you see here in front of you is the official definition approved by UNESCO and all 190 participant countries uh, back then. So OER are learning, teaching and research material in any format and medium that reside in the public domain or they are under a copyright that has been released under an open license. And today our uh, focus will be on open licenses and creative common license that permit no cost, access, reuse, repurpose, adaptation, and redistribution by others. And they also define for us the open license uh, uh, thing. They refer to a license that respects the intellectual property right of the copyright owner and provides permission granting the public the right to access, reuse, repurpose, adopt, and redistribute educational material. So th those are very two very important definitions. The first one is uh, uh, OER, and the second one is the open license. If we look at this picture here, just simply, we have uh, on the left side, we have some resources, all type of resources here, plus, if we add to it a license, which we're going to cover today, which is the Creative Commons license or an open license, then, you know, the combination of the resource and the license will give us what we call an OER. So uh, I will talk about OER tomorrow, but today we will focus on 
uh, the open license. But before we go to the open license, let us talk about the copyright, copyright, copyright laws. Uh, and the problem we're facing nowadays is with the advancement of technology, digital technologies, and of course the internet. Okay, we have the internet, we have all resources which are in a digital format, they are on the internet. So people uh, think that if those uh, resources are on the internet, it means I can copy, I can paste, I can present, I can change it to a different language because they are on the internet, which is not true. So uh, one thing I would like to emphasize here is that anything you create, it is your work. Once you publish it, once it is in any medium, okay, it is automatically protected by the copyright law, whether you are in the United States or you are in Lebanon or you are in Italy or wherever you are. So anything, you don't have to ask for, well, I need to copyright my work. Anything uh, uh, there or something you create, it is uh, copyrighted. So it is a form of legal protection, which uh, uh, automatically provides to the author of original work uh, 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 the right that this is the work. And usually, when we talk about the uh, uh, United States copyright uh, law, it gives uh, the author or creator of this original work, it gives them, you know, like uh, some exclusive right, for example, to reproduce, distribute the original work to the public, create, sell copies, whatever they want to do. Uh, they can, if I am the original uh, author of the work, I can uh, create new work based on my original work. Uh, 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 for example, if I have a book that I have written a book and it's my book, I can, from this book, I can uh, perform a play or uh, uh, at the school, at the university, at the theater, whatever, but on one condition, it's my own work. So Another thing you have to know about copyright, uh, specifically in the United States, and it depends on which country you are in, but you know, usually in the United States, the protection of, the, uh, of your work uh, it, uh, uh, in the law, it is uh, the, the, the life of the author, yani, uh, which is, let's say, uh, the author uh, lived 60 years or 70 years, then you have to wait another 70 years before this copyright will be in what we call the public domain. So in the United States, if you wanna use somebody's work, let's say, and it's copyrighted, you have to wait 140 years before uh, uh, you can use this uh, work. Or of course you can uh, otherwise pay for it, or uh, you can ask for permission or whatever. Anyway, any violation of all those uh, uh, points above, well, we call it what we call a copyright infringement. One, it, when it comes to universities and schools and, you know, a lot of people talk about uh, fair use. Fair use, it is a, a, another principle or copyright principle uh, based on the belief that the public is entitled to freely use portion of the copyrighted material. Uh, this is something that you see a lot in, uh, in the education system that, you know, I did not copy the whole book. I just copied, you know, a portion of the book and, you know, or a a portion of the presentation I, I, and I have presented it into my class. So the fair use thing is still we're talking about copyrighted material, but you know, who defined fair use? What is the amount of, uh, 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 of the material which is copied? Uh, how this material was used, that stuff like that. That's why you see, and this is problematic really with the fair use. It's a lot, it creates a lot of problems, you know, with copyright owner and people using uh, their, uh, uh, those people work. It created uh, a lot of uh, problems uh, worldwide and a lot of uh, cases, you know, they go to court about this. Anyway, I have included, you know, a couple of additional information at the bottom of the presentation with uh, some uh, video for you to watch later on. So, oh, so we have a yes. question from the chat from uh, Souza. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, because I'm not looking at the chat. Huh? Yes, yeah, the, yeah. Okay. I, I'm here for this reason. In order to support huh. you. Like yeah. There is a question saying that copyright question, what if it is an icebreaker activity everyone is using? How does the copyright? Uh, if it is what? An icebreaker activity everyone is using. Icebreaker activity. This is uh, this is what I'm trying to say. You know, like if if you're using an icebreaker activity, let's say, in your class, and for example, 
If you go to court, so suppose you know this activity is for someone and it's copyrighted. If you go to court, then uh, the the judge had to see and know what is the purpose and character of your use. Well, you're gonna tell them, well, I'm I'm using it uh, in my class. I'm using it, you know, in for example this training here. Then the judge will say that's fair use. If you're using it, you know, somewhere that in a workshop that you're getting money from this workshop, then the judge may say, well. You cannot do this because you know you're making money out of somebody else for it. so that's why i said the fair use issue it is very problematic uh, 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 when it comes to how much is the, it's considered fair use uh, you know the purpose of your uh, 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 material that you have copied uh, the nature of this material how much you have used a lot of uh, problems uh, uh, worldwide with the issue of fair use but the thing is, we have a solution, and that's why we are here today. We have a solution. So, but before we go to the solution we have and uh, what we have in uh, between our hands, I want to uh, just reflect a little bit here and think just briefly, saying, you know, okay, we have the copyright, we have the fair use, we have all those rules and stuff like that. We have the internet, we have digital resources. So, if you want to just like make a small summary of what we we just said now. We can say that we have the internet. The internet is enabling us, enabling the whole world to, to collaborate, to work, to access material. We have all those resources which are in digital format, which are there uh, on the internet. Okay, so the internet is enabling what is uh, preventing us from sharing and collaborating and stuff. This is what we call the copyright zone. So the copyright is a material forbids the internet enables and permits so the solution uh, to this is uh, what we call the open license thing or uh, which i will talk about so but if we look at this picture here just a summary on the right side here we have all right reserve and copyright where, where you see all the, you know the symbol with the c inside it okay and then in the middle, we have what we call the open license, okay? And then we have what we call the public domain. And I will talk about those, you know, in more details, you know, later on. But if you look at this picture, we're talking about from the most open down on the continuum of uh, the licenses, the most open toward the public domain. And if you go to the right side, we're talking about the most closed or copyrighted material. So. To solve this issue, this uh, 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 non-profit organization, which we call Creative Commons, back in 2001, was a guy, uh, 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 his name is Larry uh, Lessig, and you know, uh, they formed this uh, uh, organization, what they call it the Creative Commons. And uh, uh, simply the mission of uh, the Creative Commons organization was to create for us tools for the uh, uh, for the everybody for stakeholder for the whole world tools that will allow us to share uh, knowledge build on knowledge uh, and of course uh, the the objective was to have more equitable accessible and innovative uh, world so this is uh, briefly the creative common uh, uh, organization so what they have done you know simply they have created for us six different type of licenses which we're going to go into more details uh, uh, later on and the creative common licenses or the cc license where you see the cc right here it is a uh, uh, Myself, I have something I've created in Lebanon. I have a book, I have a music, I have whatever, and I want to share uh, my work with the world. Okay, so what I can do is I can use one of those licenses. So the copyright is still mine, you know, that you know, the copyright is still with you, the owner of the work, the original work. But you know, they gave us those six licenses to enable us to share, uh, collaborate, build, whatever you want to call it, uh, 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 worldwide. 
So what we will do next is we're, we're going to start. We have to understand uh, the basics of those licenses, you know, how they are formed and uh, what each of those licenses uh, 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 can do for us, what we can do with whatever resource, with whatever license it has on it. OK, and then later on, the third step, we're going to learn how to work with those licenses, because, you know, just taking a uh, uh, looking at the license, uh, understanding the license, it's fine, it's simple. But what if, if you know you want to combine, you want to remix different licenses with each other and things become a little bit complicated, but it's not difficult to learn. So the six licenses are, are based on four conditions. Uh, uh, those four conditions or symbols that you see in front of you, the first one is this symbol, which we call it the attribution symbol or the by symbol is known like that. The second symbol is the arrow key uh, reverse, which is share alike. And then we have the non-commercial symbol. And then the last one is no derivative work. So those are the basic four conditions uh, uh, which were created by uh, Creative uh, Commons. Uh, the two more symbols I want to talk about, which we call or we refer to those two symbols as the public domain icons or public domain symbols. The one, the first one on the left is the zero symbol, and the second one is also the C with a, a slash on it. This is two, whenever you see those two symbols, we're talking about public domain uh, uh, license or resource is in the public domain. So I'm going to start with the first symbol or the first condition, which is attribution. We have to understand in order for us to be effective, you know, once for all to be effective and work with uh, uh, those uh, uh, open license or creative common licenses, we have to understand those condition very well. The first one is CC BY. CC BY, this is uh, this type of license, whenever you see it on a resource, whatever the resource is, it will allow, it means what? It means, you know, uh, uh, myself, I am the uh, creator of this work. I decided to attach this CC BY license on my work. For example, somebody in Italy find my work and see this license, he will, you know, no, he doesn't have first to take permission from me. He doesn't have to call me. He doesn't have to send me an email. Okay. All he has to do or she has to do is just take this license or the, take this work and abide by the license which I have attached and I have decided to attach it to my uh, uh, work. So CC by license. And this is we refer to with the most open license. Okay, it allows you as a user to distribute, remix, adapt, adopt, build upon material in any medium or format, so long as attribution is given to the creator. Attribution, we'll talk about attribution later on. We're gonna learn how to give attribution to the author or the uh, creator of this uh, 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 work or project or whatever. So this is the first condition. The second condition, uh, the, uh, this is the share alike. Uh, simply the share alike, if you look at this uh, symbol, CC by attribution, by the way, you're gonna see the attribution on all licenses. No matter which license you will use, you always have to give attribution to the uh, uh, person who created this work. Share alike, it means, you know, you can take uh, my work, you can reuse it, distribute, remix, adapt, do whatever you want to do, so long as whenever a new work is created from this work, okay, you cannot change the license, you have to distribute the new work or whatever you've done to the resource under the same uh, license, okay? Uh, under the same license. When I go get to the example, you will understand it more. And the third condition is non-commercial. Again, with the non-commercial symbol that you see here, uh, you can, of course, re distribute, remix, adopt, build upon the material, any form, but you cannot make money from my source. Yani, yeah, take the book, uh, the book is CC by non-commercial, download the book, print the book, give it to your student in your class, do whatever you want to do with it, but you cannot tell your student, I need $10 because, you know, uh, I gave you this book. Don't make money off this work. This is a non-commercial. And the last symbol here is the no derivative work. And the no derivative work is another condition that it allows us, 
but allow the, the user to reuse the, the source or resource or whatever to distribute it uh, in any medium, any format. I can uh, 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 do whatever I want to do on one condition that you cannot modify or adapt. You can adopt, but you cannot adapt. And you cannot change anything in this whatever resource. Take it as is, use it as is, even though if you want to make money from it, we have no problem, but don't make uh, 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 any uh, adaptation or any derivative work from the original. And you see this a lot in, you know, maybe in uh, uh, research, stuff like that, saying this is the uh, output, this is what we have, don't touch it, uh, use it, but don't do, uh, don't do in any new work based on whatever uh, we have. So the, the, the combination of those uh, uh, four conditions, this is what we have, the six licenses that you see here. Here, I want you just to uh, 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 concentrate with me a little bit on uh, those licenses. So now we have six licenses. Those six licenses are based on the four condition we just discussed. Allah. If we look horizontally, or let me start vertically on the first column, derivatives can be shared, okay, on, on, in this column here. I have the CC by, okay, I have the CC BY uh, non-commercial. The second column, CC BY share alike derivatives can be shared only if you share alike because I, you know, this is the share alike license that you see in each one of those two licenses. And the last one, the two licenses here, derivatives cannot be shared because you see the equal sign in both licenses. And if we go, if we go to uh, 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 horizontally, we have the first row here, we have the CC BY, okay, CC BY share alike, CC BY no derivative, commercial use allowed, yes, the commercial use, if you use one of those licenses on your work, a commercial use is allowed. If you go to the second row right here, commercial use is not uh, uh, allowed because you have the dollar sign, the dollar sign in each one of those licenses. So, but one thing in common between all those licenses uh, is that the CC BY is in all six licenses. This is something we have to remember. Any work that has an open license, you have to give attribution all the time to the uh, person who created this original work. So I will look at the licenses from a different uh, angle now. From the uh, most close, you know, and when we talk about uh, uh, the six licenses in the open movement worldwide, they talk about the most open licenses and the what we, they call the not open license. Even though they are classified as open licenses, but the open movement advocates say, well, if we start at the bottom, we have the C down here, all right reserve, as you see on the screen. This is copyrighted material, okay? There is no open license whatsoever. If we go up a little bit, we have two licenses here. We have the first one, CC BY, non-commercial, no derivative. CC BY, non-derivative. Those two licenses here are the least open between the six licenses. And you will understand more because there is this no derivative uh, 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 in each one of those licenses. Because if you cannot take the work and do uh, uh, adapt the work, uh, 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 try to find something new from this existing work, and then putting back on the uh, putting back the new work in the, on the internet, then this is not an open license. That's why those two licenses uh, they they don't call them. Uh, uh, as, o, you know, uh, OER, especially if you find a resource with those uh, licenses, the equal sign, no derivative, people say it's not an OER. This is a resource, it has an open license, but it's not true an OER. Moving up, you know, we have the CC by non-commercial, CC by non-commercial share alike. This is in the green zone here. Of course, here, uh, you can use the licenses, do whatever you want to do with them, but you cannot uh, make money out of those licenses. And then moving up the ladder, the most open are those three licenses. The first one is CC BY. This is the most open. And if you see somebody 
who has the CC BY on his resource or his book or his whatever, this is, you say that this is the most open license, the most open resource uh, uh, that you have. CC BY share alike, okay, uh, also it is uh, um, uh, an open license, it's classified as most open, and then of course on the top, the zero symbol with a public domain, this is, you can do whatever you want to do with it, okay. And even whenever you see a resource which is in the public domain, you don't have to give any, any uh, attribution if you don't want to. Yani, you, 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 if you want to use the resource without attributing the owner or the creator of the resource, you have no problem whatsoever. But ethically, my advice, even though if you find something which is with a zero public domain license, it's always good, it's always ethical to put uh, uh, an attribution, uh, if you find it on the resource, to the original creator of this resource. Let me, before I move uh, uh, in front, let me, let me see, I don't know, Marco, do we have any, any questions so far before I proceed further? Many thanks for you. Uh, if, you have any, if you have any questions uh, so far, uh, yeah, just, I I yeah. have one uh, following up this uh, example of small ice breaking activities or the ones that the public uses. What if we don't know the origin? Uh, so we have no idea how, who made it first because uh, we all use it, but we are going to sell the material. Um, and we put something that it's very common, commonly used. So I don't think we can get to the roots, but we are selling it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the thing is, you know, if you don't know the, uh, for example, you know, if you don't know the, the, the creator of the work, and you're taking something and you're using it, maybe, um, it might be that this work that you are using, maybe one day, it's going to create a problem for you. If somebody will maybe send you an email saying you're using my stuff, I want money for it, I'm going to sue you if you can. So uh -huh. there are so many... Many problems if you, you know, if you go to the Creative Commons, you see a lot of cases happening with the license. And my advice to you is try, don't use a resource. If you want to reuse it, you want to change it, you want to do whatever you do. Uh, first of all, don't use a copyrighted resource. Yes, and since, you know, we have almost now, uh, you know what, we have almost, uh, according to Creative Commons, we have around 1.6 billion uh, work, you know, uh, on the internet, which are an, under an open license. Yeah, if you don't find uh, this activity, uh, uh, which is maybe you find activity uh, uh, under copyright, you can find it, for example, under an open license. This is ah, my okay. advice, you know, okay. because maybe maybe if you're using it in the class and uh, in closed system, maybe you will have no problem. But what if, you know, especially now with online, with COVID, everybody is teaching, and this is one of the you know, by the way, let me tell you, this is one of the issues that we faced here, uh, 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 questions by a researcher, by a, a professor who are teaching online. Uh, they stop because it's online, because everybody is watching, because parents are watching, I don't know who's watching. With whenever it came to content, they, you know, I had to give a lot of workshops, a lot of training for, you know, a, a K-12 uh, 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 professor, uh, university professor about content because now they are scared they are afraid you know to put content online everybody is watching and this content is copyrighted uh, so that it will create problem for them or for the institution so uh, uh, that's why the, the 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 open licensing the oer is something very important in all in all different departments and whether it's uh, your teaching whether in the research because uh, tomorrow's session, we're going to be talking about open access, we're going to be talking about MOOC, open pedagogy, open data, all those open things, you know, that we see. But uh, let, me, let me move on. Thank you. Uh, a little bit. Thank you. So uh, if we... If we move to uh, 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 this uh, compatibility chart, as I said before, uh, using a, a resource, you know, finding a resource, let's say, with an open license and taking, reading the license. Now you know, for example, or you already know how to, what this license means, that's fine. But what if, if you want to find, let's say, you have two resources, okay, with different open licenses and you want to remix, you know, for example, you want to take 
one resource from one source, another resource from another source, combine them in one uh, a new resource and then use it or publish it or whatever. So this is a chart. This is a very important chart for you uh, uh, to look at and understand. I will give an example. If we look at the uh, uh, first uh, 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 column right here, okay, you have uh, public domain uh, C, public domain zero, they are the same. I will, I, you will understand what's different between zero and C later on in the presentation. We have the CC BY and all those licenses right here and the same licenses which are down here horizontally, okay? I wanna ask you uh, a question, for example. If you look at the uh, uh, horizontally, look at the CC BY no derivative row, you find uh, the black X, 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 X all the way on this row, okay? It means what? Can anybody tell me what does it mean? How, how do you read it? You know, why it is all, you know, X, X, and it, it means you cannot, you cannot combine it with, for example, a license which is CC BY. And I have a resource column wise, which is CC BY. I want to combine it with another resource, which is CC BY, no derivative, as you see, but it's telling me, no, you cannot do this. Can anybody tell me why? From, you know, uh, or from your experience maybe, or from what we just uh, 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 defined the different licenses? Okay. Uh, sorry, Mr. Fauzi. Yeah. Maybe it, it is it's his right, Yani. No one can use it, no one can uh, uh, take any, it's his right, Yani. Maybe there, there's some facts uh, he's telling about, uh, Yani, he's saying about it. So no one can use it, no one can copy, no one can take it. Yeah, this is and what let, I understand. Uh, okay, no, let, let me just, uh, this is the issue. No, as I said, you know, uh, combining two or three licenses, this is where the problem was, you know, from my experience and worldwide experience that this is the problem is. If we look, I, I will go back. Look at this license horizontally. Let's read it together. CC by no derivative, right? No derivative, it means what? from the definition of the icon or the condition that you know this license take it do whatever you want to do with it maybe if you want to make money off it i have no problem but when you see the equal sign or the no derivative it means you cannot adapt you cannot make a, a derivative work you cannot combine it with another resource to make a new resource that's why the community or the open community, when it comes to CC by equal sign, no derivative, they say they are the least open or they, they're not open at all. Because the CC by no derivative here, you cannot combine it with any other licenses, even though in the public domain. Why? Because whenever you take a resource, which is CC by no derivative, combine it with a public domain resource, okay? You are creating a new resource. And this license with the CC by no derivative does not allow you to adapt, create a new, and that's why you see all the axes right here. So this flow chart or this compatibility chart is very important for you whenever you try to find two licenses and combine them together, okay? If you wanna take another example, I wanna take another example. Let's take the one which on the horizontal is CC by share alike, okay? And go horizontally. It can you can combine it with public domain license? Yes, you can. CC by I'm saying CC by share alike. If you see CC by share alike, so can you please mute your uh, maybe somebody is open uh, the their microphone. Anyway, CC by share alike, you can combine it with. Uh, uh, a license in the public domain, yes, you can combine it with another CC uh, license, another resource CC BY, yes. You can combine it with another resource which has CC BY share alike, yes. When it comes to CC BY share alike vertically, uh, horizontally, and you go up to CC BY non commercial, okay, you cannot combine those two licenses together. And this is how. Uh, 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 you read uh, this chart, okay? 
this is a chart, but now with the examples, you will understand more. But this is a very important chart for you uh, to understand the uh, uh, mixing of two licenses or combining two or more licenses together. Moving on, what you see in front of you here, this is what we call uh, 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 the uh, layers, what are the uh, official layers uh, of the six licenses we talked about. As I said before, Creative Commons, this nonprofit organization, gave us those six licenses, but behind those licenses, uh, there are a lot of work that if we look at this picture, every license that you see, it is divided with a CC by or CC by non-commercial. It is every license, every license, it has three different true layers. The first layer, which we call it down here, it's called the lawyer readable layer. Yani each license, there is a, 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 a all the content uh, and all the description of the license in case there is a dispute or there is a problem, you know, a lawyer or in court can use whatever document which is behind this specific license especially when there are, you know, like disputes and stuff like that in uh, court. The second layer that they have uh, uh, created for us is what we call the human readable layer. Human readable is the one that you see, the icon and the text be below the item, that human can read it. Yani whenever you, you search on the internet and you find a resource with whatever license, uh, one of those six licenses, you can read it, you can see it. It's a human readable layer. And the third layer and the most important layer is what we call the machine readable layer. For example, as you as we will see in the example, you can uh, Google, uh, now you can Google and say, Google, uh, I want to find resources which have a specific license. How does Google know to return for you back only licenses which are uh, that you specify? Because with each license from the six licenses, there is a code that is, you know, which is attached to this license and it will be attached to the resource and we'll have, we'll talk more uh, about that. So every, uh, every license, every single license, it has, it has a three layers. <laughs> Marco, can, can you mute please everybody because uh, some people have open. Marco. أنت تجربة بنصحك خبير وأنت مطمن راح تدعي كل اللي أخذوا منه مصدر جربت والله لا ترجع تشكري على عرض اليوم آخر يوم برجع تعرضون أكثر ماركو كان يوم يوت أروى أروى كان كان يوم يوت يور مايكروفون بليز أروى شو بدك تجي شرطة yes thank you Omar thank you thank you because it was open and we couldn't hear anything all right. Uh, uh, Marco, you're still with me? Hello? Oh, he's not here. All right. Can uh, everybody can hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Oh, very good. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. All right. Let's move on. So th those what we call the anatomy of uh, 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 an open license, it is divided into three different uh, uh, layers. Well, uh, here, what you see is, now I want to uh, decide as a researcher, I want to decide as a uh, professor or whatever, which license is the most appropriate for my work, which license I have to put on my work to share. I, I have included here uh, a, a licensing flowchart by answering a couple of questions, I will not, because uh, uh, if we have time, we'll come back to it. But it is there. This flowchart, you know, uh, it's a very nice chart. It, it is created by, I think, uh, the Creative Commons chapter in Australia. It will be a set of questions, and either you go yes or no, depending on the answer. And at the end, it will tell you this is the best license for you to use, depending on uh, this uh, uh, the, the, the answer to whatever question they have. And then here, there is also the uh, CC license chooser tool under Creative Commons. We're going to take a look also how to choose a license. It will be created automatically for you. Okay. 
And then if you want to apply CC0 to your work, you can go to the CC0 link right here and it will uh, ask you a couple of questions and it will create the, uh, uh, the uh, CC0 license. And here, uh, before we proceed and start giving some example, uh, maybe I can, we can do a small uh, activity together, which we call it the license matching activity. Before we go to the example, yani, I will ask, we'll, we'll go together and I, I need some answer from you, that's fine. And then later on, we'll go with the example one by one and see how uh, uh, well you know about uh, open license. But I don't know, maybe I have to stop sharing here and I have to share my screen so that you can see it. Just one second, one second. Let me, let me just uh, share, I'm gonna share my computer, optimize, just one second. I'm gonna share my screen, all right. Let's, let's do this activity together. This is a very nice activity, it's called the uh, uh, license matching activity. Just tell me if you can see now my screen. Can you see it? About test your knowledge? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, we can see it. Very good. Yes. All right. So we're going to start this small game. And this is, you know, it's available there. Uh, and uh, the, the game is, you know, uh, we'll have a question. And then somebody is going to tell me which license to use. Okay. With the examples, maybe that's okay if you don't know or if you don't, you don't get it right. But, you know, once we go to the example, you will understand more. Let's read in blue. Okay. The question is, how would this author licenses work? And in blue, this is what he wants. I don't care if people change my resource. Just give me credit. And I don't want them making money off of it even if they modify it. Which license? We have to pick up one of those six licenses and put it in this white box. Uh, do we have any volunteers, please? Anna, she volunteers? Uh, Which license to use? I don't care if people change my resource, just give me credit. And I don't want them making money off of it, even if they modify it. Can I say? Okay. Yes, uh, Raniero, Fadat. Yes, of course. I would take the, the buy and see. The so, buy and see. Raniero said buy and see. I'm going to CC buy and see and I'm going to submit. And uh, you have selected the right license. Thank you, Raniero. Great, one point. Another question. People can use my resource as long as they credit me, but they cannot change it. And I don't want them making money out of it. Which license? Marta, for example. Marta, with us, which license would you use? Can I? Uh, or, or anybody, you know, just. We, you know, Y, N, C, and N, D. C, C? Yeah, that's what is in the middle in the second line. C, C, Y, N, C, and D, this one? That's what, that's what you want? Yes. Okay, submit. Ex excellent. So this is. A nice activity, we'll stop here. This is a, a, a nice activity that you can uh, uh, use and it is in the presentation just to test your knowledge or if you wanna use it with your, uh, uh, in your training or whatever. Let's move on. Now, I will go through some uh, example. You see now back my uh, 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 presentation, right? CC public domain. Okay, so you see it, right? Yes. Okay. So the first example here, uh, this is a, a picture. This is a picture, okay, with the CC0 uh, uh, public domain license. And as we said before, uh, this is one of the most open licenses. And of course, it's, it's, uh, the public domain, I, let me emphasize one point here. As I said, uh, any work will be in the public domain. I gave you an example, for example, in the United States. The age of the person or the creator, after he dies, you have to wait 70 years so that his work will be in the public domain. And of course, there are, for example, government work, uh, government data. It depends on which country it will be in the public domain. But I'm saying about individuals or researcher or whatever. But you have the right, you know, as a creator, 
uh, to decide from the beginning, whenever you want to share <clears throat> your work, you can decide that I want to share my work in the public domain by putting a license, which we call CC0 uh, license, okay? And one thing that you should know, once you know you put a license or you use an open license to your work, it is irrevocable, yani it, you cannot take it back, you cannot change it. So that's why it's very important for you to decide which, which license to use. And if really you want to share this resource under an open license. So if we look at this picture here, of course, with this photo that I have here, I can change the color, I can uh, cut, I can crop, I can do, I can combine it with maybe another picture. Okay, I can make money of it, I can uh, print it on a big poster because it's in the public domain. And if you look down here, there is an attribution which says Color for Sky in the Dirt by Sasha is licensed under CC01.0. And it means what? It means Sasha has decided to put this picture or whatever uh, painting she has under CC0. Another example about CC BY. Let's take this example here. If, if we see this picture, for example, uh, on the internet, and uh, 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 we want to, to, to see what we can do with this uh, picture, first of all, if it is CC BY, and this is the most open and the most open between the licenses, what I can do is I can change it however I want. I can uh, uh, make money uh, from it. I can maybe uh, print it on a t-shirt. I can print it on, uh, 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 put it on a PowerPoint, whatever. But the thing is, I have to give attribution. That's why CC BY, the attribution thing, it's, it's all in all our six licenses. And it is attributed by the name of the, uh, this picture is Donuts by Ferry is licensed under CC by two license. Another example is CC by share alike. If I see a picture, let's say, with this specific license, CC by share alike, again, I can change it however I want. I can crop it, I can apply filter, I can change color, I can do whatever I want to do with it. Even uh, if I make money, of course, from it, I can do it, okay? But if I change anything in this picture, and I want to put it back on the internet, on a digital repository, I have to abide and do the same license on my new work. And I have to use CC by share alike. I cannot say CC by share alike non-commercial, for example, on the new work that was created from this original work. This is what the share alike means or the SA symbol that you see in the license. Another example is the CC by non-commercial. It means, okay, take it, change whatever you want to do with it, uh, anything you would like, but print it, put it on your t-shirt, on your uh, on your hat, whatever, but don't make money off it, please. Yeah, and don't take this picture, put it on a t-shirt and sell the t-shirt for $5. You cannot do this because this is my work. This is my portrait, and this is where you will have a problem. You are using an, uh, 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 an open resource with an open license, but you're not abiding by the license, then you will get in trouble or you will go to court and the person who uh, uh, can take you to court if you don't use the license in the appropriate way. Moving on to CC BY uh, non-commercial uh, share alike. Here, uh, as you see, we're going to the least open license. We're going into this direction. In this one, you can uh, change it. You can do whatever you want to do with it. You have two conditions here. Don't make money out of it. And if you share it again, you put it on the internet or whatever, it should be uh, under the same uh, condition, okay? It should be under shared under the same license and the same condition. Here we move to the least open uh, license. If we look at this picture right here, if I see it on the internet and I see this license CC BY ND attached to this picture, what I can do with it? You can do anything you want, okay? You can make money from it if you want. You can print it on a poster. You can, uh, 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 you can, you can do anything with it, but one condition, it, the picture 
has to be the same. Yeah, you cannot take a, a you cannot crop a small piece of this picture and use it somewhere else. Why? Because you took uh, something from this picture and you created a new work. Okay, if you look down here, you cannot crop part of the image out so, so that it is the size of book. Yeah, and you cannot say, well, this is too big, I want to make it smaller. And uh, since it is an open license, I can do this. No derivative, take it as is. You cannot do anything, uh, 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 you cannot do a new work or a new derivative from the existing uh, work. And of course, this is another license, which is uh, also uh, CC BY, non-commercial, no derivative. You cannot, uh, a, a good example, when you see TED Talks, you know, that, you know, the popular thing, this is usually those uh, talks are under CC BY, non-commercial and non-derivative. You take it, you show it in your school, you show it in your class, you have no problem with it because they are under this license. But don't, you know, show it in your classroom or uh, in uh, your hometown and say, well, you have to pay money to come and watch on a big screen uh, one of the famous talks, you know, cannot do this, all right? And those are some examples. Now we want to move to attribution. We want to uh, 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 now we understand how to read the licenses. Uh, uh, next, we, we need to talk about attribution. Attribution and how to give attribution and what are the tools which are available for us to make life easy when it comes to uh, attribution. And one thing, uh, you know, I will repeat it, any license, any open license that you see, the attribution is there, okay? You have to attribute unless it is in the uh, public domain. Okay, so uh, usually those are some of the steps, you know, uh, uh, whenever you're looking for uh, a resource on the internet, what things to look for. First of all, what the license type is, what you can do with it. Uh, you look if uh, it depends on the website, depends on the resource, depends, you know, you have to read, you know, the instruction about attribution because some uh, some uh, uh, work or some resources, the owner or the creator will tell you exactly how they want to how they want you to attribute their work. This is very important to look at those things. And you cannot say, well, you know, I just attributed this way. No, if there is instruction on their website or their resource, you have to follow their uh, 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 instruction. Another thing, be careful. Uh, even though on the same website eh, you find resources which are under open license or resources which are copyrighted. So if there are any uh, copyright notices, you have to include them and understand them with, uh, on a website or on a specific uh, uh, resource. Second, you know, whenever you, you, you just gather the information, what is the title of the work or, uh, or the image or whatever, uh, who, who's the creator, what is the URL, because you're gonna, as you see in the attribution, if, if it is uh, a URL or it is a, a resource which found in a database or whatever, you have to reference uh, this work. And of course, you know, uh, the license type and the, the link to it. Okay, how, how to write the attribution? The very simple uh, thing to remember, which we call the TASL, T-A-S-L. Okay, tassel, and this is a good rule of some to always remember. Yani, you have to put the title, what the name of the material. You have to put the author name, who owned the material. And if you can include the link, if it is available somewhere and it's digital, you have to include the link. And then the third, the source, where I can find it. Where is this original work coming? Is it coming from Notre Dame University? It's coming from Creative Commons? It's coming from whatever? Okay, and then of course, the last thing is, uh, 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 what is the specific license? We call it the TASL or the TASL. So if we look at the bottom of the screen, usually the attribution goes, we have the title of the presentation or the resource, by whom, second, is licensed under and which license type. It's very simple. We're gonna see a tool which was uh, which is created by Creative Commons. You just answer a couple of questions and it will do the uh, creation for the attribution for you so you don't have to worry about, especially if you are mixing two different licenses. So this is an example here. 
uh, of a, a resource using the TASL uh, technique. First of all, the title is nature, the author, whatever name, the source is coming from where and the license. And if you see it down there, it, uh, you will translate it down there as an attribution to whatever uh, resource, okay? But when it comes to derivative uh, work, here you have to combine the original attribution plus the new work that uh, uh, it's being done. If you look in the green down there at the, at the bottom of the screen, this is an attribution of a work which was derived from another work. But you have to attribute the, this work, whatever new title is, a derivative of which title by which author and under which license, okay? And what is the new title of the work and which license is and your name at the end. And here, in this example here, if you, if you have uh, uh, taken a resource, you have created a new resource yourself, then you have to give attribution to the resource, plus you have to include, uh, maybe you change the name of the resource, you, you have to include the new title of the resource with, of course, what license type, after you see the, the matrix, if you can combine different license as we, as, as we have seen before, and of course, your name. This is, things here become a little bit, not complicated, but a little bit tricky whenever it comes to uh, attribution. Let's take some examples now with attribution. Let's say this is, the, on the left side, you see the original work, and on the right side, you see the derivative work, all right? If we look at the first picture, this is the name on it. This is a CC0 uh, 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 resource, okay? On the right side, derivative work is on, if you look at it, you see they change the color. The color is changed in the derivative work. So the original work, Color for Sky in the Desert by Sasha is licensed under CC0. Contracts change from origin, okay? And this is the telling the person that this picture is coming from Sasha. It is in the public domain. And this new work or this derivative work, it has, we changed the contracts. Let's talk, let's see another CC by uh, 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 image or work or original work. The first on the left Before, side. Okay, yes. Can I ask you a question on the previous yes. one? On the previous one, yes. This is zero. So you say that if it, if it is public domain, I yes. can use it, uh, the way I like. So why right. do I have to, to? Why do I have to say that I have changed the the contrast and 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 who is the owner of the? Okay. Uh, if you if uh, yeah. Uh, usually, usually, if you use it and uh, without putting any attribution, you're okay. You have no problem whatsoever if it's in the public domain. But what I said before is ethically, from an ethical point of view, okay, okay. and usually those people, you know, in the open movement, if, the, you know, putting attribution, giving credit to the people, even though uh, 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 they don't want them, uh, they don't want to be attributed, it would be ethically from your side as somebody using this resource to put them, but you are free not to put it. Yes. Wait. If it is in the public domain. All right, CC BY, this is the only license that you don't have to give attribute. You have an option, as I said, but all other six license, uh, you have to attribute. No way you don't attribute, you can do it, okay? You can, you can put, you don't put attribution, but it's not ethically to do this, okay? This is a CC BY license. If you look at the left side here, we have the attribution at the bottom. What I have done, is I took this picture and I have added something to it. I put some, some stuff on the faces right here, if you see on the donuts, okay? So that's fine. This is a CC BY, I'm allowed to do it. I have modified the work, I have a new work now. I have a derivative work. So let's look at the bottom here, okay? This work, which is called, uh, this is a new work now, a new, a new resource. Uh, uh, Ria, uh, look at me, it's called now, I want to call it not donut, I want to call it donut faces, is a derivative of donuts, by whom, by Ferry on the left side, Ferry uh, C. Tompol, and it is licensed under CC BY 2.0. Come on, donut faces is licensed under CC BY non-commercial 
4.0. That's that's a little bit, this is a trick here, and I want you to please follow with me. Since it is CC by license, and this, uh, I can do whatever I want, uh, if you notice, I have changed the license type with the new work I have. Before it was CC by, now I have created a new one, and I put a non-commercial thing, and I'm allowed to do it. If you go to the table, the matrix, you can see, and I can combine uh, uh, this, and I can put it under new license. Nobody, it's not a share-alike thing in the first one. It's CC BY, right? So uh, here, uh, uh, the example here, the license uh, term has changed to non-commercial. Yani, I'm telling, okay, I've done a nice design, I put the glasses, but please don't print it uh, uh, on a t-shirt and make money of the t-shirt, okay? This is an example. Another work, CC BY share alike. Let's look at the left side, original work, and on the right side. If you look at the right side, somebody took the picture and added some person, somebody uh, in the middle uh, uh, elephant is sitting, you know, they added something to it. They have modified it. They have done a derivative work, okay? So the attribution here, uh, the original is share alike, right? CC by share alike. The derivative work, it should abide by the same license. And that's why you see CC work, Patchy Patrol, this is my new work, is derivative from White Elephant by whoever, CC by share alike. And this new work is licensed under CC by share alike 3.0. If you realize here, the same license was used on the original and the derivative, and I'm not allowed to change it because the owner of the original asked me, he put a license which has a CA or a SA on it, it means share alike, I cannot change the license. Another example, CC by non-commercial, this is the same thing, I have original photo on the left side, I have another uh, one with it, I, I have combined those two pictures in one picture right here, I can do whatever I want to do, okay, with it, but on condition is that the, the, the new one, if you look here, under CC by non-commercial is licensed under CC by non-commercial 4.0. 4.0 and 2.0 and 1.0, those are different version of the CC license. You know, like each time they have a new version, it means they have added new feature, new stuff. And if you want to read about uh, those version, version one, what does it mean, two, three, and the enhancement, Creative Commons done, you can go always to the website of Creative Commons and it will give you all the explanation, what's new in version four, what was in version three, so on and so forth. If you take this one here, this is another example, CC BY, non-commercial share alike, the same concept. Okay, share alike, non-commercial. I cannot make money out of this uh, work. And if I create a new derivative work from, from this uh, work, I have to use the same license. And of course, this is the CC by no derivative. As we said, you have to use it the same. You cannot do any derivative. Yani. You cannot create something new from uh, this one. So those are here, you will see some uh, tips for attributing. Uh, uh, I will stop here. Before I give some, uh, some examples, I wanna just uh, guide you to some uh, uh, examples that we uh, talked about. Do you have any, uh, is there any, any question be, before I, I, I move on to, to some of the examples? Mm. And let me just uh, see. Uh, any, any questions? All right, let me, let me proceed then. I will, uh, I will go to uh, the first example. I want you to go to the Creative Commons website. This is the Creative Commons website. You can still see my screen, Creative Commons, right? I'm gonna now uh, go to the actual website and we'll take some, this is the Creative Commons.
icon. This is the normal icon. Let's see if I go a little bit into filling out more options with this uh, screen. Here you can say, I want to put a title for my work. This is, for example, I'm going to call it Donuts. Okay. Attribute work to name. I'm going to say to Fauzi Barud. Let's say. I'm going to put, for example, W where this, where I can, my homepage oarlab.org, for example. Uh, if there is a source for this work and it's coming from a website or I have, okay. So if I, if you don't have, that's fine. If you need more uh, uh, URL for permission, the format of your work, this is here. Is it an audio? Is it an image? Because automatically it will embed the, the standard. This is for standardization of the resources. It, it will know what to add automatically under this code. And then, okay, you have the code here. This is the, the icon. Donuts by Fauzi Baroud is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike, and this is an international license. And here you have the code you can copy. What you do now is once you create it, is you, you take this whatever here, hmm, and you take it, you copy it, and, uh, uh, and you put it in, let's say you're working on a document, all you have to do is, you know, uh, paste it right here. So automatically, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, writing it uh, yourself or the attribution yourself. So this is, and of course, you will have a picture and under the picture, you have uh, this attribution. This is, uh, you see it on the Creative Commons website. Allah, what they have done something, I'll just tell you about, they have uh, uh, done uh, what we call uh, curation of uh, resources on the Creative Commons website. And by curation, let me, let me go to search for CC images. Okay. If I'm looking for, let's say, birds, I'm looking for a bird on Creative Commons. What they have done, curated from different resources, from Flickr, not Flickr, all uh, images related to birds or audios or videos, okay? They curated them from different places. But the nice thing about this curation, if once you hover your mouse uh, on the picture, it will tell you up here on the left side, this is a CC by no derivative. And then now you know, no, I don't want this one because, okay, it's an open light, but I want to change the color of this pigeon from white to red, and this license will not allow me. On the left side here, what you can see, you can filter the birds that you have found here, all the birds, because they have over 10,000 images here. Just give me the birds which are, have CC by license, and then you can see here, all birds that they have in their curated or data, database, for it's, it's a, a CC violin. You can take the picture. It has all the information about the license. It has, uh, uh, if uh, uh, you can uh, uh, look at all the details, what type of attribution, the information about this picture, the resolution. And moreover, it, they have done something nice for us. If I take this picture and, uh, uh, I copy it, for example, I want to uh, copy this image and I go to my document, let's say, and I, 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 I paste it here somewhere in my uh, uh, document. I still need the attribution. So what you will do is, let, let me remove this one. What you can do is copy also, the attribution is there, I can go to my uh, MS Word, and then I paste it, and here you go, the attribution, the correct attribution for this picture, which I found it on the uh, Creative Commons Digital Repository. So my advice to you is just go to uh, 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 Creative Commons uh, website. There are a lot of resources uh, that uh, you find useful uh, uh, on Creative Commons. Allah. Let me continue with uh, Google Advanced Search. 
since you know if you remember we said that the uh, each license it has three layers that you know each uh, license uh, of the six license has the human readable we have the machine readable and we have the uh, what we call the lawyer readable link because google is part of this movement Allah, whenever whenever you search for something on google it will return for you thousands and millions of uh, of resources what if now you you want to use the google and if you go to google advanced search and you search for whatever item or resource you're looking for let's say you're looking for uh, uh, qualitative you're looking for document about qualitative research okay either you hit enter and you will get i don't know how, how many thousands of uh, resources but if you go down under user uh, advanced search in google if you go down to the page here you can put all the filter the nice thing with google is there is something called usage right where you can filter your search under google is under which license which open license you want Google to return the result. Either you say, I want you to return all the resources which are free to use or share, free to use or share even commercially. And the thing is, now how does Google know that uh, this resource uh, uh, is or has this specific license? Because as I said, each license from those licenses that we attach to our resource, it has a machine readable uh, thing or code that those like Flickr, like YouTube, like uh, Google, like all those search engines and uh, uh, digital repositories, they will know whenever you say I want a very specific license. So let's let's look at the result when you put free to use or share. Now, if you if you go down and if you look at those results for example this is coming from qualitative from a chapter in a book it's coming from this website let's let's take a look at it because i told them just bring send give me back all the resources which are open resources so here they're talking about qualitative analysis grounded theory all this data that's fine but i have to go to the, somewhere to see the license uh, at the bottom there is license and attribution i click on it right here I see social science research principle. This is attribution and practice authored by whoever provided by University of South Florida located at, this is a, where this is located. And this resource is licensed by CC BY, non-commercial share alike open license. So I can use it. I can do whatever I want to do with it. But you know, on one condition, if I add something to this resource or this document, or I added something to this uh, qualitative resource, it means I have to uh, uh, to share it under the same condition. And if you click on it here, on this license, it should take you to the Creative Commons website to read more about this specific license, which, atta which is attached with this specific resources. Because this is a license that is at that CC by non-commercial and no derivative. And if you go down it gives you all the details about this license uh, with all the exception, with all uh, everything you need about the license, uh, it's uh, uh, linked to the Creative Commons website. And most of the licenses, the link are, are uh, connected to the Creative Commons uh, website. So this is, let me just close this one. This is, let me go back. This is how uh, Google is part of this movement. So you go to Google Advanced Search and you go at the bottom here, the usage, uh, 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 usage right, and you choose which type of license you're trying uh, to uh, find. All right, let's go back to uh, uh, Flickr, the same thing. Also Flickr part of the movement, you just go to Flickr and then uh, 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 try to find any picture, but you turn because on Flickr you find copyrighted pictures and you find uh, uh, open uh, open license picture. You can specify which type of picture or uh, things you are looking for. I'll, before uh, we, I open the floor for the Q and A. Uh, there is one more website I want you to know about, which is the which is the uh, Internet Archive. And the Internet Archive, it's really it's something that 
uh, everyone should know about. And the Internet Archive, it's a huge uh, website that, you know, when I visited uh, Boston, I had the chance to go and visit those people to see what they're doing. Uh, this website, it's a, it's a huge digital repositories from audios, from images, from software, from uh, books. You can, they have a huge open library of books that you can borrow online. And we will take an example to the web that you find it anything you don't find it anywhere maybe you will find it on the internet and all the materials that you find in the internet archive it is an uh, uh, open with open license material moreover uh, let's go to, let, let me do a small ten, five ten minutes of internet because it's important and then i will open the floor for any q and a uh, this is the website of internet archive uh, just before I proceed, anyone is familiar with Internet Archive in the, from the audience? Can, uh, from the participants? No, we don't know about it. All right. So the Internet Archive, it has, it, it's a huge, uh, uh, and the reason from the Internet Archive, the, the, the guy behind this initiative, he wanted to archive the Internet. Uh, he wanted to inter uh, 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 archive everything on the Internet. First of all, they started with the Wayback Machine. Wayback Machine, for example, let's say in my university, the president come say, Fauzi, you've been with us for so long. Can you tell me what was on the NDU, Notre Dame University website uh, since maybe uh, 10 years back? I, I would say, how would I know, finish? We have a new website now. I don't know what announcement was it. But if you want, since the Internet Archive and the Wayback Machine, they are archiving any website you give them on the Wayback Machine, it will give you the archive depending on, let's take an example. This is www.our website here at our university, nu.edu.lg. You just put the uh, website in the Wayback Machine and then you press enter. Once you press enter, what it, it will give you, it will give you for this specific website up here, it will tell you here a timeline. It will tell you, I have snapshot about your website, sir, from 2000, 1998. This is, those are the web, you know, web shots that, they, that this uh, crawler, special program they have. Let's take, for example, I'm looking for I wanted to see how our university website and what was on it back in 2007, let's say, since 13 years. So you click on the year up here, and then down here, it will tell you when was the snapshot taken, in which month. I'm going to say, well, take me to January 10, for example. I'm going to click on this one, and it will take me to how was my university website back in 2007, 13 years back? And this is what we had on our website. This is true. This is how it looks like. Now it's much different. And if you look here, we had some announcement here. For example, the third installment of students to pay their money is between January 4, 11, 2007. More with some picture. You have... Uh, who was in the academic department, admission, stuff like that. So this is what they call uh, the, the, the way back machine. All right. So this is, uh, oops, let me go back, sorry. So this is one thing. Another thing is uh, uh, they have an open library. And my advice to you, okay, my advice to you is you go and sign in uh, for a username and password. It's free of charge. You can uh, just, uh, and the reason for why, because if you go to their uh, books here, what they have, and this is something for your research, for your project, for uh, displaced people in the future, you know, I'm giving you examples so you have to think about and you can use them in the future, in the centers, with stakeholders, with the refugees, with displaced people, you know, with, you know, just it's all free and open. So if you go to the open library here, and of course, just, you know, create an account, as I said. So uh, you just, uh, once you have, uh, I don't know if I can, if I remember my username and password, I don't know. Maybe I remember. Oh. Okay. 
here we go. So here you can browse a, a huge library of books. It's all free of charge. For example, I'm looking for K-12. They have now archived. If wait, uh, you're looking for books for or stories for uh, K to 12. Okay, you just uh, uh, you go to this book. For example, you like this title. You don't, you're not finding it anywhere. It will give you detail. You can borrow the book. You can borrow it, and all the books are. You can print it if it's. It will tell you what you can do with the book. Now I'm borrowing the book, and the good thing is about this. This is the book. Now I'm borrowing it with you. You see my book, yes? Heavy and light. You see it? Yes, we see it. Yes, yeah. we see. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you just flip like this. You read the book. You know, this is a book. When is something light? And moreover, people with disability, people because they, what you can do is uh, uh, you can, for example, read this book aloud. You can click on this one here. And Lighten then another. And it will read for you. It is you difficult you, for the girl to lift. Somebody with disability. But it is easy for her to lift the toy bear. Okay. Lightest means lighter than the others. The box of crayons is lighter. Sorry, can you hear the sound too? Yes, sure. Yes. Oh, very good. So this is of crayons. What, what you see here, which, you see a huge library from everywhere. It is archived, it's scanned, and moreover, you can here find, for example, you can search, uh, uh, you can search uh, this book for a specific Muslim uh, 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 word, let's say, and it it will tell you down here where the girl is, you click on it, it will take you to the page, for example, and it will show you that this is, you because I tried to find the word girl in this one. So this is a, a, an example of their open library. They have a huge number of books and you can read it, okay? And that's it, okay? This is all under uh, 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 open education and uh, open licenses uh, stuff. Another thing here in the Internet Archive, what they have done too, uh, since 2009, any, anything, maybe you're looking for a music, you're looking for a, uh, a video, you're looking for anything, you see those icons here, just please take the time and look at the Internet Archive. It might be very useful and it, I think it will be very useful for the work you're doing now and the work you will, might be doing in the future, especially with displaced people, uh, you can show them uh, the website, they can use it, they can make use of those all open resources. But I, let me just say one thing about the Internet Archive. Since 2009, what they have done is they have archived around maybe 80 uh, TV station. Yani if, for example, uh, Raniero is doing a research about displaced people, you know, in the news in Italy or in Hungary, and you want to find what, 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 TV station are talking about, especially your, your project is it's a research-based project. The race project is based on research. So let's go to the a TV a new the TV archive that they have. And you they have the advanced search, internet archive of the new. So I'm I'll be looking, I'm I'm looking for uh, 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 forcibly or I'm gonna say this place. I'm looking this place people. I'm gonna use this term. What I'm trying to find, I'm looking in the, maybe now he will look for 80 different TV station archived, 24 over 7. So I, I'm looking for uh, displaced people uh, in the media to see what people are talking about this. So now it will give me back about 50 on the top left here, there's 57, uh, 800 results. Down here you can filter by TV, you can filter by year if you're looking for specific data from, let's say, 2000, uh, and it, it would show you from which year they have an uh, archive. For example, looking for uh, 2011, you just filter it. You can apply it here. I'm looking just for 2011. It will filter anything with the world view. And then what you can do is it will give you on the right side, it will give you the TV station, it will give you the program, and it will give you uh, the exact time they discuss the, uh, about uh, whatever search you're looking for. Uh, let's take an example, uh, for example, anyone, I can take uh, uh, BBC, let's say, 
I want to see what BBC are talking about. It will show you exactly all in, in less than one minute because of copyright and stuff like that. But it will show you uh, uh, what you're looking for. For example, in this part, they talk about displaced people. Let's see, you can at 6.17 a.m. on June 5, 2011, in this specific program, BBC Overnight, I want to listen to what they India, said, you have, and you can listen to you, it. Yes, we have, I think, the world's largest number of millionaires or billionaires, but we have 800 million people living on less than 20 rupees, which is about 30 cents a day. You have millions of displaced people. You have more p poor people in India than the poorest countries in Africa. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, the reason you know, I, I wanted to show you this website because it might be for your, your project or what the work you're doing uh, for your... Uh, uh, later on, it's something for you uh, to uh, uh, know about. All right. So this is another thing. And they have so many. Uh, yeah, the Internet Archive, it's a very rich website and it's all open and... Uh, free. Uh, I will stop here. Okay, and here I have uh, the, this is the website. I'm uh, uh, I've done. Uh, uh, I'm in charge of it here uh, in uh, Lebanon, Oyal, Lebanon. But the idea of this uh, website was okay uh, uh, for people in the area. I'm doing a lot of work with uh, open education, open license in the area, and not in Lebanon. But I'm I'm working with you know at the Middle East level because you know this open education movement. I want this open education movement, open licenses, creative commons to be uh, in the hand of everybody in, in high school, in uh, universities, and uh, NGOs, with everybody, because it's beneficial for all. And OER Lebanon, if you go to OER Lebanon, I'm compiling also uh, material in Arabic and resources in Arabic for people who cannot, you know, uh, speak as, uh, about uh, different type of uh, content and stuff like that. So I want to stop right here. I want to stop right you. here and I want to take some, uh, I'm ready to answer uh, uh, any question. Thank you, Fauzi, and uh, for the, the, the very interesting presentation. And uh, I, there are already three questions in the chat from Raniero. Okay. Uh, the first one uh, is related to the, the full, um, if the, uh, is related to the Creative Commons license. Uh, the default says commercial right. If there is nothing about commercial exploitation, I can sell the contents. So Ranero is asking about how to relate, uh, how to deal with the commercial right. And this is the yeah. first question. The second yeah. one is related to if I want to put copyright on some of the content, I have to register it to the national agency. This is at least in the case of no, Italy. here, yeah, I'm, I'm reading uh, what Ranero about CC. Do I have to register the license? Yes. Someone? Okay, I'm, I'm reading it. Now, oh, okay, let, me, good. Let, let me answer the first question. Please. Uh, if it is the default is commercial, right? And it, it doesn't have no commercial, okay, uh, then you can do whatever you want to do with it. Because, you know, uh, I decided uh, to put it like that. And if you want to make money, just I don't care, you know, use my work. This is my work. And I want you to make money or do whatever you want to do with it. But if I want uh, uh, um, uh, that people use my work, but uh, don't make uh, money out of it, I have to put the, uh, the dollar sign, okay? Hello, the second question, you have to put copyright on some content, I have to register, no. Uh, Raniero, as I said, in most countries, now the internet, it has billions of work on the internet. The thing that we need to know, and this is people don't know, that's why they copy and paste, copy and paste, and you know, we have problem with student in well, so it's on the internet. Yes, it's on the internet, but it's on the, it's for free access but it's not an open resource. Anything with copyright, and I, I said it, anything that we use and we print on any medium, internet, digital repository, book, it is copyrighted. It is by law copyrighted, whether in the United States, everywhere. Okay, so, and that's why, the, that's what the problem, that's what I was trying to say. And the internet and digital resources are permitting us uh, to find and you know all those resources but the copyright is forbidding us from doing this and the solution was the creative common licenses and the creative common licenses they are built on the copyright of the owner yani, because the attribution is there yani, if i take something from raniero under open license 
I have to give attribution to Raniero, but I decided as uh, uh, Raniero that he decided to share it with the world, okay? And this is something I guess with the refugees, with the displaced people, and uh, when it comes to education, uh, especially with languages, you find so many huge amount of resources in English, in French, but you need it in Arabic maybe, you need it in uh, Russian, you need it in, I don't know, African language, then with an open license, the right license, you can do the translation with no, uh, with no worry, with no problem at all. Okay. Uh, if I am in Italy and someone is another country with the license, usually that's why, you know, you, there is uh, the international uh, license thing, you know. Uh, whenever you don't know which license you want to use, it's international license. And usually, uh, uh, it depends if you are in Italy or in the United States, each country has their copyright uh, uh, laws. And uh, whenever there is a problem, it uh, depends if you're in Italy or Lebanon or wherever. Okay. But uh, mostly whenever uh, the copyright in all countries, everywhere protects you because as I said, anything you put on the internet and somebody take it and use it without your permission, if it has a C copyrighted, then you can sue them, whether in Lebanon, in Italy, or in the United States. You know, we receive so many emails, uh, Raniero, saying, well, uh, please, you have something on your website uh, put by a professor, which is not, uh, maybe it's copyrighted. Please, you have uh, uh, removed immediately, or you have 30 days to remove it, you know. You receive warning from uh, people, you know, or the owner, or the creators, or whatever. But... If you have the open license, if you know how to use it, you have no problem with nobody. Just abide by the license and you're okay. You're okay. From uh, okay, many thanks, Mr. We have new important information for copyrights. Uh, Fauzi, yes. there is a question from uh, from Luisa Arizona yes. from Cesia. So Luisa, please, you can open Luisa. the mic. Yeah. Hi, Luisa. Uh, hello once again. Um, I'm a project manager, so I'm thinking really pragmatically on how also we we can share better the results of our RISE research, as I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, I was wondering um, how comes that when we did our own research, and of course we refer to many even institutional reports and dossiers, how, and I was just uh, checking now, out of uh, 150 um, reports that were dealing with migration in Italy in the last uh, 10 years, most of them are not labeled with any uh, CC license. Uh, logo. Yeah. So I'm wondering um, how comes it's just that we are not used to register under uh, creative commons we think okay we put it on our website and that's cool enough and um so if institutions don't do it uh, should we at project level uh, at eu project level for every report we publish as the consortium being the author should we label really each PDF file that will be registered yes. at the common page and be on our website. Yeah, I, I, I got uh, your point. Uh, you know, let me tell you what, uh, uh, you know, I, I will answer exactly what you're asking. I understand. Let's take the United States of America now. After the open movement, open education, all those things, you know what they have done? They said in the law, anything which is sponsored, university, school, a research center, anything which is sponsored by uh, uh, the American government, which is coming from the taxpayer, the money, all the output, whether at MIT or Harvard or whatever, all the output, it has to be under an open license. They force them to put an open license. In your situation, for transparency, if you want, you know, what's, what the use of your work, let's say, or this project, the beautiful project based on research, the race project. If, you know, for me, if I was in Lebanon, I cannot make use or I cannot build on whatever Raniero did for uh, three years uh, uh, with the research on this project. I need to take this document, 
build on it and create a new one maybe. Now, if Raniero, uh, people don't know about open license. People say, well, it's on the internet, it's free. Okay, it's free, but it's not open. This is the problem. What we need to do, and this is why Raniero insisted that we have this uh, session so that participants in, in such a project will understand. And awareness is the problem everywhere. And this is what I've been doing, you know, from uh, 2014, I've been doing and doing awareness campaign uh, about OER, about open license, about, you know, at the university level and at the national level, very important at the national level. Uh, let me tell you, Luisa, I went uh, uh, two years back, I went to the Bika Valley in Lebanon. This is where a lot of refugees from Syria. And so we brought the, the school teachers you know, and I told them about, you know, uh, I spent one whole day giving presentation about OER, open textbooks, open data, and unbelievable, you know, now, uh, and, uh, you know, that people are looking for me, what is housy? we need more, we need more. And they were so happy so that I introduced them to this open thing with open books, open textbook, and they're using them for refugees, for example, now, and they have no problem with the uh, material because it's under open license. So Anna, my, uh, my advice, if this is your project, you know, if you put on it an open license, the copyright is yours. Yani, nobody will take the copyright from you. But what you're trying to tell Fauzi in Lebanon, that Fauzi, take this work and use it this way. Don't ask me any uh, permission. I will not make a problem for you. And uh, uh, for, the, for equity, uh, for access, uh, for uh, less used uh, or under-resourced, underprivileged, you know. Now I'm, I'm talking about this here. For example, Raniero is listening, you're listening, Kefaya is listening from Jordan, so that you know everybody will think how he can use this, those resources or those open license for future work. It's, and then transparency is very important. When you have an open license, you know, you're very transparent, you put it on your website and you want people to build on this. You know, after all, we're talking about sharing, right? And sharing is very important. It creates the knowledge community, actually. Yeah. So we need, awareness is very important. Now, Louise, I know I, I shared something with you. Maybe you will share it with uh, your community, with your stakeholder, with your company. Uh, maybe you want me to give uh, uh, more, uh, 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 more details, you know, I'm ready, uh, you know. Uh, we need to create this community of practice under openness and sharing. Thank you very much, Fauzi. Uh, another you. question from uh, Kifaya. Thank you. And we, yeah. we have only three minutes, five minutes left. So, okay. please, Kefaya. Kefaya. Yes. Mr. Fawzi, many thanks for your uh, uh, sorry, information. It is yani, really a very important information for us. Uh, sorry, my voice is a little bit because I'm sick. Uh, Salim, Salim, we, we, usually, we usually use pictures, videos uh, for the social media, uh, and we used to share it. Uh, so in this case, we have to look first the uh, for the copyright, for each video, for each copy, for each pictures, before we share this, uh, yeah, yes. before we share it. Uh, sometimes you find it on the uh, on the Google, but uh, they didn't mention it. So right. in this case, in this case, we will, and you will not get uh, any legal uh, thing from the editor that they uh, issue this uh, pictures or videos. That's why I have to, and you know, uh, it's easy for us or it's okay for us to uh, share anything from the uh, Google on the social media, especially face, on the face, on... Uh, yeah, uh, I, got, yeah I, got, I got your question. Hala, let yeah. me tell you one thing. Uh, uh, as I said, Google is part of this movement and I show you an example how to find resources. Uh, uh, yeah. YouTube, they have their own license. But also in YouTube, when you search for videos, let's say, because sometimes, let me tell you, Kafaya, uh, let's take this project now, the race project. Yeah. They want to take a video about a, 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 pro a, a, a special topic, but they want to translate this video, uh, uh, put caption in Arabic or French or Russian or Hong I don't know. So if this video, if you share it, you just share the link, you have no problem with that. You're not violating, even though it's copyrighted. Where do you have problem, Kefaya? You have a problem if you take a video which is copyrighted, you take this video, you download this video and you yeah. uh, make a derivative work. For example, derivative work, 
uh, you added the caption in Arabic on it. And this is something for displaced people, something very important. There are so many beautiful videos, important videos that can we can make use of them. Right, why, yes, why, right. But you know, then you have to look for uh, videos which are under Creative Commons license. And there are so many videos under Creative Commons on YouTube. Yeah. But now whenever you find a video, try to find in the advanced search of YouTube, uh, that is the place that you can say, give me back the videos which are with open license. Many thanks for you, Mr. Okay, Fawzi. Kifaya. All the best. Uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we have a session, uh, uh, Rania, at the same time. And yeah. tomorrow I will, uh, we will talk more. And uh, today we talk about the open license. And uh, as I said, we need to uh, put the, the, the strong ground for open licensing and OER and open access. Tomorrow I will be talking about all the digital repositories. I will, we will differentiate between open data, open access, all the MOOC, because, you know, as I understood part of this project, uh, they're going to be creating a MOOC where you share uh, resources for uh, uh, everybody, I think, in the future, right, Raniero? That, that, that can be a MOOC. For example, uh, the MOOC is it's a, uh, it's a platform, you know, which most of them worldwide, they are free, but they're not open. Okay, so here we have to discuss this issue and people who are in charge of this project will have to know that, you know, is this a, a, a free MOOC or it is a free and open MOOC. So we will understand more about this uh, uh, tomorrow. And the last session uh, that we have, it's going to be uh, uh, about uh, uh, practical example uh, tools and technology and interactivity about online e-learning, online learning and different uh, types of uh, technology. This is going to be our uh, the third workshop next week. Anna, I want to thank you very much for your time, for your patience.